If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. So far in our hyperparameter tuning journey, we've talked about the importance of hyperparameters. We've talked about the common approaches like grid search and randomized search. And we've also talked about the limitations of these approaches. Then we talked about the advanced approaches like the Bayesian search and some advanced frameworks like Optuna. How do they help in determining the better hyperparameters and they are computationally more efficient as well. In this video, we're going to perform a hands-on using the same data set that we've been talking about, but we'll be applying Bayesian search using scikit-learn optimize, and we'll also be using Optuna to solve the same problem. And we'll be comparing which approach takes lesser time and where the results are better. We know that grid search and randomized search had some limitations, which the modern approaches or the advanced approaches have been able to overcome. Let's get started. So, so we're using the same data set that we generated using make classification and we did a train test split. Now we'll straight away go to the Bayesian search. All right, so we'll start with the Bayesian search now. In order to get all the classes that we'll be needing for this purpose, you'll have to do an installation. So you can simply do a pip install scikit-learn optimize. This doesn't come with scikit-learn model selection. So this is a specific installation that you have to do. Since I've already done it, I've commented it here, but if you're doing it for the first time, you'll have to do it. Then from scikit-learn optimize, we are importing Bayesian search and from scikit-learn optimize dot space, we are calling certain other classes, which will allow us to choose the type of hyperparameters we want to create. For example, there may be integer values that we want to choose from, from the hyperparameter space, or there may be categories that we may want to choose from. As you can see here, we are defining a parameter distribution where we are saying max depth takes integer values between three to seven. So this integer is something that we called here through scikit-learn space, and we are using it now to mention that the max depth would take values between three to seven. Please note, it's not like grid search where we are defining values like three, five, and seven. It could take anything between three to seven. Similarly, we are saying min sample leaf would take integer values from 10 to 100. Then we are saying min sample split, again, 30 to 300. And N estimators we have taken from 10 to 50. Max features, this is a string type data. So we are mentioning categorical. These are categories. Either we go with the square root of the number of features or we do a log to the base two. Then it's pretty much the same. We call the random forest classifier with a certain random state. We call base search CV. So you're not calling grid search CV now because you're doing a Bayesian search. We're calling base search CV where we're mentioning the estimator, the parameter distribution, the cross validations, the scoring metric, and we are mentioning the number of iterations. We have taken 20 iterations in this case, and again, a random state, because Bayesian search relies on certain random aspects as well, as we've studied in the theory. Now we could have used n jobs as negative one, if we want to use all the cores of our processor. Then we are noting now the time when we are starting this process of fitting the model, and also the end time. And the difference between them would tell us how long did it take. Let me just run this and we'll be able to do a comparison between this and the grid search and randomized search as well. How long does it take? So now that it has finished running, we can see that it took approximately 52 seconds. Whereas the grid search had taken roughly four times more time compared to this one. And what are the results? What are the best hyperparameters that we've been able to find? It says max depth is seven, max features it has chosen the square root way, min sample leave it has taken 10, min sample split has taken 30, and n estimators it has taken 50 again. So like I said, you know, we can always optimize on these further. It's just that you can rely a little more on Bayesian search now that you know how Bayesian search works. And of course it's more efficient. Now let's look at the results of this. We're pretty much doing the same thing. We are doing a predict on train, predict on test, and we are looking at the classification report. So if you see these results are fairly comparable to the grid search, it has taken less time, and it is not just a random selection from the space, it is based on some logic. That makes it more reliable compared to randomized search as well. So this was Bayesian search. Now let's talk about how we can use the Optuna framework to do the same task. So once again, for Optuna, we will have to do installation. We'll have to do a pip install Optuna because it doesn't come there by default. And then we'll have to import Optuna. And then we are also importing the cross val score because we'll have to write our functions here. So this is not totally aligned to the way we do it in scikit-learn or scikit-learn optimize. 
This is somewhat different in terms of syntax. But if you understand what happens in hyperparameter tuning at a high level, this is pretty much doing the same thing. Yes, under the hood, the logic is very different. But overall, the exteriors or the way you approach hyperparameter tuning is going to be pretty similar. So we are defining a function called objective, which will take an input called a trial. Now trial would be what? Trial would be various combinations of the hyperparameters. And these are the hyperparameters that we are mentioning. Now, if you remember in case of Bayesian search, we had used something like an integer or categorical to be able to choose the hyperparameters from this given space. Here, because it's a different library, we'll have to rely on its methods like suggest int. So suggest int is like the integer where we are saying that for the hyperparameter called max step, we want to take values from three to seven. Likewise, suggest int again for the min sample leaf, min sample split and n estimators. But where we had to use the categories, we are mentioning suggest categorical. So that's just a modification in the syntax owing to the fact that we're using a different framework altogether. And we are saying max features could take two values, square root and logarithmic value. Then we are calling the random forest classifier and we are mentioning these hyperparameters as we have defined in the objective. So this is within the objective function that we are calling the random forest classifier. Finally, we are calling the cross val score that we called from the scikit-learn model selection, where we are passing the input as the random forest model, this model, the train data, X train and Y train, the number of cross validation fours, and the fact that we are scoring on recall. Now, why do we have to do all of this? Because you don't have this option by default available in Optuna. In case of grid search CV, randomized search CV, and even Bayesian search CV, this was pretty much available in a built-in way. But here we are trying to do it ourselves in a custom way. But I hope you get the idea. It's pretty much similar. Then we are finally saying we want to do a sum total of the recall scores that we'll get and divide it by the number of scores. So that will be the average recall score. Again, we are starting the time before we start fitting the model. And then we are saying Optuna.create study. So this is a method specific to Optuna where we are saying we want to maximize our objective. What is the objective? The objective is the recall. So we are saying we want to maximize the recall, start exploring the hyperparameter space in such a way that we are able to find the maximized value of recall. And then we call study.optimize, which is again a method specific to Optima where we are mentioning the objective. This objective is nothing but this function, and we are mentioning that we want to check it for, let's say, 20 trials. I made it 20 just to have an apple-to-apple -apple comparison with Bayesian search, and then we are also capturing the end time. Let's just run this and see what happens. Okay, just finish running, and we can see these are the different trials that are showing. There, there are 20 trials from 0 to 19. These are 20 trials, and it's found certain hyperparameters. Notice the hyperparameter values are not exactly the way we give it in the grid. Because we gave it a range or a distribution, it is taking up different values. Min sample leaf, it says 16. Min sample split, it says 30. N estimator says 31. You remember in grid, we kind of pass values like 10, 20, 50, something like that. And uh, max features, it says square root. Best score it found is 92.49. And this is the recall that we are talking about. And now we'll have to, if you want to generate the classification report, once again, run this kind of code where we call the random forest classifier with the best hyperparameters that we found here. To get them, we'll have to use the dot best params. So this was the study that we ran earlier using Optina. Using the study object only, we'll have to call the best hyperparameters. And that's done using best underscore params. We need to mention the names of the exact hyperparameters and it'll be able to call the best hyperparameters from the study, these values that we got above. And then we just do a fit, and then we do a predict, and finally, what is the answer? So you can see, kind of gives us decent result, not the results which are as good as what we got from uh, the Bayesian search, but these are pretty much on track, somewhat different, but still stable results overall. And of course, in terms of time, if we compare, this only took 30 seconds. Bayesian search, on the other hand, took about 52 seconds. Now, we are generalizing that Optina would always take lesser time compared to Bayesian search, but definitely this is more efficient compared to the grid search. And of course, the results are more reliable compared to the grid search because it is taking the values which the grid would have not even considered. It's, it's taking the values which are in between the range of values, and that's the best part of it. The model performance measures, accuracy, recall, etc., would depend on the data set as well. So we can't say that Optina would always give you results which are inferior compared to Bayesian search. It could be the other way as well. The main takeaway is that advanced approaches are definitely superior compared to the conventional approaches, mostly in terms of results, but definitely in terms of efficiency. 
With this, we complete the hands-on piece of the advanced hyperparameter tuning.